Good morning to everyone. My name is Kevin Durles. I'm a former commander of the VFW post here in Glendale Heights. I am standing in for Commander Bill Wolf, who is living under the weather this morning. I'd like to welcome you all to Glendale Heights Veterans Day Ceremony 2020. At this time, I'd like to direct your attention to our flag raising ceremony and national anthem performed by Isabel Adusi. Thank you, Isabel. We will now have our opening prayer by Chaplain Bob Vargas of VFW Post 2377. The parade rest and uncovered. Let us pray. Almighty God, we stand here today to pay tribute to the brave men and women, living and dead, who not only served their country in the armed forces, but too many who have gave their, given their lives to this COVID-19 virus. Oh Lord, as we battle this pandemic, we pray that you give us, bring us together in your love and mercy, and give us what it takes to defeat this unrelenting disease. Accept our thanksgiving for their sacrifices and sacrifices of their families, which have purchased for us a free land. Cause us never to take for granted their devotion to liberty. Let our spirits be proud of them. Let our hearts be compassionate and our minds clear and determined in giving them honor and res respect that they deserve. And give within us a flame of selfless, unwavering devotion to duty that we may never be found wanting in those qualities of spirit and mind which are able to preserve our homes, our communities, and the peace of our nation. Keep our memories alive with gratitude and our gratitude alive with our faithfulness to the principles which made our nation great. Grant, we pray, your peace, joy, and mercy to those living and for those who are at rest. Let us also remember our POWs and MIAs, still unaccounted for from all the wars and conflicts. Let us now bow our heads for a moment of silence in remembrance of our friends and family who are serving today as well as yesterday. All these things we pray in your great and holy name. Amen. Thank you, Comrade Chaplain. Now we will have words of reverence by Village President Linda Jackson. Good morning, everyone. 
everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today to honor our veterans. Let me take you back in time for a short history lesson of this park. When I came on the village board, we broke ground for our veterans park, right across the street where those houses are now. When that plan fell through, the idea of the veterans park just sat on the back burner. When former VFW Post 2377 Commander Bill Regan was getting installed as state commander, he invited me to the ceremony at the VFW in Aurora. Of course, I wanted to show my support, so I went. When I was put at the head table, looked at the program, I was shocked to see my name as a speaker. Wow. Every speaker before me was presenting Bill with gifts of recognition, and here I am with nothing. I got up to the microphone and apologized for not having a speech or presentation, but told them I do have a gift. It was just too big to bring with. And it was for all veterans. That was the promise of a veterans park at the corner of Bloomingdale and Fullerton. Everyone was thrilled. Now I just had to figure out how we could do this. The great staff, supportive trustees, and the dedication of our community, we ended up with this phenomenal tribute to our veterans. 16 years ago today, with temperatures in the teens, we dedicated Veterans Memorial Park. We envisioned a place for remembrance, not just for those veterans that have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their country, but for all veterans that have served. We wanted them to remember every day how thankful their community and country are for their service. It is also a place for veterans to remember their own service. It is a place for veterans to remember. The oath they took to defend this country against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. To remember the far off places they served. To remember the friends they made and those they lost. We wanted to let them know that we remember the sacrifices made to protect us, and more often than not, the citizens of a country that they may never have even heard of until they were deployed. I want us to always remember what makes America's veterans so special? Our veterans leave their homes and head off to the unknown, confident that their country will care for them and use their service for the good of all. Today, we thank our veterans that served not for themselves or for those they know, but for freedom for all. Thank you again for coming. And may God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Madam President. I want to begin today by expressing my gratitude for joining us today. To look around, we have the representatives, uh, we have veterans, Representatives of the police department, fire department, citizens. We even have God's soldiers here, Knights of Columbus. Thank you for joining us. For the world, for our country, and for our community, 2020 has been an unusual, difficult year. From facing the stress and fears of the coronavirus pandemic to overcoming the isolationism and aftermath of the quarantine. For some, it might be, have been easier to forget about today 
and to make a promise to ourselves that next year we'll have a bigger celebration. But I'm honored that you have taken the time out of your lives to ensure Veterans Day remains a special day. Veterans Day is a day on which we as Americans have a lot to remember. We remember the wars fought to defend, protect, and preserve the freedom we enjoy in this country. We also remember all those who have bravely gone to war and who have given of themselves so that others could live in peace and safety. And we also remember those who have gone to war and paid the highest price for these freedoms. Those of us who care to honor America's heroes gathered together today because we are honoring our sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters who are serving on behalf of everyone in our great country and community, just like the generations of American patriots did before them. In the November 1941 issue of the VFW magazine, magazine, as we were mobilizing our forces to enter World War II, editorial read, the people of America are fulfilling their often re repeated pledges to the memory of America's honored dead, men and women who gave their lives to establish this nation, and to the, and to the heroes who have died since 1776 to defend it. They know our democracy will endure as long as we are prepared to defend it with our lives if necessary. Those words have much, have as much meaning today as they did then. And as veterans, we understand that wherever there is peace, wherever there is freedom, there is also a threat to them. And as the decades and centuries have passed, generations of men and women have bravely and selfishly heeded the call to serve. As veteran of foreign wars and as members of the organizations whose primary mission is to serve and care for those who have served, we understand that Veterans Day is a day of deep significance and opportunity. To us, it isn't just another day overlooked and ignored. To the more than 1.5 million members of the veteran of foreign wars, it is a day to honor the millions of soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who have selflessly gone wherever and whenever they were called. Excuse me, my hands are dry. As veterans, we think of our own experience in the military compared to those of our parents and grandparents. We think of all those who we served alongside. We remember their names remember their faces. We think long and hard about just what it, what it is that links veterans of every era together, what it is we share not only as Veterans Day, but on every day. I can tell you now that those who have served in the military share common values, and that serving our nation brings with it a special bond that is forged by common experiences. Veterans differ in every way imaginable but we possess an equal love of our home, family, and country. I believe that each of us has a deeper appreciation for freedom and take a special pride knowing we have been responsible for ensuring that freedom remains, not just for Americans, but for so many around the world. I hope today serves to motivate us all a renewed sense of patriotism, purpose, and pride, for America is truly the best country on earth as a direct result for those who have served it. Thank you. We will now have the laying of the wreath. Those present. We'll now have our closing prayer by Chaplain Bob Vargas.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, shepherd of us all, we ask for your benediction to rest on this day, as you have graciously preserved our nation through the years and have led us in wondrous ways. Grant that we may be worthy of our high calling as a nation. And as we depart this memorial park, guide us each day to remember our men and women in uniform, especially those in harm's way, fighting this war against terrorism. And keep in mind their families whose support is second to none. Amen. I'd just like to say thanks again for everybody for coming today. Uh, I've been a member of the Glendale Heights Post for since 85, and uh, this village never ceased to amaze me uh, of its support of its veterans, and we certainly do appreciate it. So that concludes our ceremony today, and as they say in the military, dismissed. <laughs>